uh, we ended up the last video with this simple script uh, which sends waves of uh, messages with different velocities to the push. I'll just run it again. And you can see the LEDs are lighting up with uh, different velocities which are separated by uh, using set timeout to uh, put a delay between the different colors. Um, there were some good uh, comments on Reddit and on YouTube, so thanks for those. Seven Russ said, uh, I always thought that Node was for server applications. Um, so I think primarily it is used for that. Um, I don't use it for that. Uh, the one place I do use it in work, uh, we use a framework called Ember.js. It's a web framework. And the development time server and the build pipeline are all powered by uh, Node infrastructure. It uses NPM packages, things like that. Um, MacGreenBeat says, I've been looking for a wrapper for the web MIDI API. I'd love in the next video if you could show how you tackle sending audio data through Howler or Tone or something. Um, I have a little mock-up here. So I've never heard of Howler or Tone. Um, I've looked a little bit into web MIDI API. It's something that I'm hoping to uh, play around with in a, in a couple of videos uh, time. Uh, cool, the drum machine. Uh, doesn't seem to work. Oh. oh, it does work. Okay. What was that? <laughs> okay. Oh, I have to press the letters. I see. Cool. Okay. Um, so, uh, I am going to uh, mess around with the web uh, MIDI API. Something I'm hoping to do is uh, to build an actual controller for the push, uh, probably using Ember.js, but uh, really using the web MIDI API to handle all of the communication. Um, so I'd expect to do that in the next month or so. Uh, Lurk says, would this be useful to enable the push to, to be more full featured? as a generic MIDI control service. I feel I could use this platform to write a trans translation layer and be able to control aspects of logic with vis visual feedback, um, lighting buttons and rotary controls. Uh, that's exactly what I'm hoping to do in the next uh, month or so. So I imagine it might take 10 videos or something like that, but uh, that's something I'm, I'm planning to do. So thanks for the suggestion. Um, for some reason, Reddit has two Ableton Live uh, subreddits. Um, this one has no comments, so clearly Ableton subreddit is winning. On YouTube, Cormac asks, could you do reading for the next video? Maybe triggering the LED of the buttons on the opposite side or something along those lines. Uh, yep, that sounds like a good idea. Let's do that. Um, so reading is pretty simple. Uh, Let's just comment out that. We don't need that right now. Um, so we're getting the data uh, from the push. We're currently just piping it to the log function. Let's actually convert this to a function. It receives a single argument of data. And let's log that out again. So this will be pretty much what we've had before. Um, so you'll see we're getting that data in. Um, there's something uh, not ideal about the this the form that the data comes in so you can see the bottom left is 36 and the top right is 99 um it would be nice if uh that went from 0 to 63 it would be just a lot easier to work with um we could easily then convert that to rows and columns and uh from there it will be even easier to transform so if we want to do a transform on the row or the column That'll be very simple. So uh, let's do that. Um, so uh, we get a note in here. It's in the data. You can see it's in the, uh, it's the second item in the array. So we get that array, uh, that number, and um, to normalize it, we'll just subtract 36 from it. Um, meaning that, and I'll just console log that out, that the note will now be uh, normalized to a nice index, right? So it'll be zero at the bottom, 63. Uh, so much easier to work with. Um, so we should be able to then 
uh, pull that out into rows and columns. Um, so the column, um, the column will be, uh, I think if we mod, uh, mod it by eight, it should give us it the actual column. So uh, mod eight, right? So this will be uh, this this one here will be eight. So mod eight, this will be zero. Um, so all of these will be zero, all of these will be one, uh, which is what we want. Um, and the row is going to be, uh, we'll just divide by eight, and that will actually give us a, uh, a number that we can floor to actually give us the index. So it'll be something like math floor, because otherwise it would be um, a float. Uh, we want to divide note by eight. So we should have now, if I log this out, and this is row, obviously, um, we'll have the note and then the column, uh, the row and the column. Let's do it that way. So they should all be zeros and you should see that the node is incrementing the um, let's see if we got that right. The row is zero, the column is three, that's correct. Um, so all the way up and then these should go up. Uh, this column is all zeros, this column is all ones, this row is all ones. So uh, that's much more useful for us to work with. So to play a note, uh, we're gonna use the row and column as well. Uh, so I'm going to create a new function called play. Um, this time it'll take a row and column instead of a actual note because um, it's going to uh, reverse down to, uh, the normalization that we did on it. Um, it will take a velocity and it will take a delay as before. Um, and it's, I guess, going to do this exact thing here from before. Uh, with a set timeout, uh, on a delay, we'll default that to zero if none is provided. Um, so we need to work out what the actual node is going to be. Um, so we're just going to undo what we did up here. Um, so the note is going to be uh, the row times eight um, plus the column. Um, and also plus 36 because we take away 36 uh, up here. So that note should now uh, work. So uh, if this works, we should actually see uh, the keys light up and they do not. So I must have done something wrong. Um, we're sending a note on, we're sending the note. Uh, have I got that right? Um, so row times eight plus the column plus 36 seems right to me. Uh, of course, we're not even calling the function. <laughs> uh, so let's call the function. Um, it would help. Uh, the velocity we'll just say for now is 100. We don't need a delay because if we don't pass in the delay, it will be undefined here and it will default to zero. So let me try that this time. Hopefully that works. Okay, so that does work. Um, it's putting on a note, uh, it's doing the right note. Um, that number, that color is pretty boring. So how about we uh, write a little function which will return a random uh, velocity. So uh, this is gonna be um, a random number between uh, zero and 127. So random will give us a number between um, zero and one. So if we multiply it by 128, that will uh, give us a random number, um, but it will be a float. So if we do a math dot floor on it, that will give us a integer uh, from zero to 127. 
So now instead of passing in the 100, we'll pass in the random velocity. Um, so this should, oh, I just realized you didn't see that code. So let me switch back to that. Um, so I built this random velocity function here. Um, math that random times 128 and get the floor of it. We'll return a random number from oh, 0 to 127. And we're now using this in here instead of the 100 that we used to, uh, that we had that gave us this um, kind of boring color here. So if I run that, now we should see that we're actually applying random numbers um, as we touch the keys. Be nice to clear the board um, before we actually play a note. So let's create a clear function. Um, this is easy now because we can address uh, rows and columns. So let's iterate over those. So we want to uh, play a note. I guess this time we want to send in 128, which is a note off. So we're going to have to modify the play function to accept that. It currently doesn't take an instruction. It just uh, always sends a 144 note on. So uh, we want to pass in a row, our column, and a velocity. I don't think it matters. Let's send in zero. Uh, this is going to be the instruction. And instead of hard coding the 144, we'll pass that in, meaning we'll have to pass in 144 here. So uh, if this works, we should, uh, you can see there it actually on press, it clears the board, which is good. Cool. We still have our random colors. Um, so we're probably set up to try, uh, what was the task? Um, triggering lead buttons on the opposite side um, or something like that. Okay, so let's do the opposite side. So um, I guess we want when we press the lower left, we want the one on the top right to light up. Um, so mirror on both axis. Um, so uh, to work that out, let's just draw some boxes. So we have eight boxes. Uh, starting at index zero. And we want, uh, when we press one, we want seven to light up. When we press, sorry, when we press zero, we want seven to light up. When we press one, we want six to light up. Um, one goes to six, two goes to five. So really all this is, is um, seven minus the index of the thing we uh, press gives us the one that we should light up. So in this case, we're pressing one, seven minus one equals six, meaning we'll uh, press that. Uh, seven minus two equals five. So when we press two, five will light up and that goes on. So that's uh, pretty simple. So we will subtract the index of the row. And if we do it the same with the column, that will uh, apply uh, mirror function to it. Uh, let's do that. So instead of just passing the row in, we're going to do seven minus the row and seven minus the column. Um, so if I run that, uh, this should now mean that the mirror image is applied. Um, pretty easy. Um, so let's, uh, what else? Let's actually send in uh, the row and the column as well. So we get both. That's kind of fun. 